Good evening, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to continue the study of international logistics. My name is Felipe. I'd like to invite you to subscribe in this channel. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like. Support this channel with donations. Don't forget to start the notifications in the ring bell below. Share this video with your friends. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Thank you very much. Let us start. If you be pleased to add a commentary and a quest. Rates are expressed in cents per pound or in some other currency per kilo and are less per pound for large equipment. Here are some rates charged by Air, Air Jamaica for movements from Toronto to Kingstown, expressed in Canada cents. Commodity described minimal charge rate in cents per libra. Foodstuffs, spice in beverages, minimal charge 40.60, rate in cents per libra. 156 to 104. Testicles. Shoes. Note that for shoes and testicles, one will need to be shipped 1,100 libras or over to use these rates. The vast majority of rates in the tariff booklet applied to general commodities only meaning that it made no difference what commodity was shipped. Tariff rates are not considered to specific shippers. A second form of air cargo rate, not shipper specific, is for shipments in containers or unit load device ULDs. The same tariff document gave this York City to Buenos Aires Airlines on Land Chile, Chile Airlines. $6,000 with a pivotal weight of 4,409 libras, with additional weight being charged at the rate of 6 cents per pound. The third category of rates are contract rates negotiated between airlines and forward or cheapers, or between forwarders and cheapers. Often, they are expressed as a price per kilo, with a discounted rate based on total weight with an example being weight in kilos, weight for per kilo, 1 to 49, 6 dollars, 50 to 99, 4 dollars, 100 to 499, 3 dollars, 6 cents. Ship air trafficking. In the following example, the airline offers a rate of $2.45 per kilo for shipment for 1,000 kilos. If the forwarder can consolidate 10 shipments averaging 100 kilos each, the qualifies for the 1,000 kilo rate 10 per 100. At 1,000 kilos, the forwarder buys space at $2.45. The original shipper would pay the 100 kilo rate $3.06. If you went directly to the airline, the forwarder therefore has a $1.15 per kilo spread to play with because he has to be more competitive than the airline. He may offer a rate of $2.90 to the shipper. At $2.90, the shipper saves $70 per kilo. $3.06 less two dollars and nine cents and for the earnest 45 cents per kilo two dollars and nine less two dollars and 45. the forward may also offer some additional service such as cargo pickup in the late 1980s air france and lufthansa began to insist that the cargo we bill show the cargo rate actually pay and the commission normally five percent charged by the forwarders. In this way, the forwarder could not exact a large middleman's profit without the shipper becoming aware of it. To some destinations, the forwarder may have insufficient bond to amass large shipments. The forwarder will then team up with another forwarder and co-load to the destination. 
one of the two becomes the shipper or master co-loader, national forwarders, with many offices and terminals around the country, face a classic linear programming problem every day should consolidated shipment be sent directly from the regional terminal to the destination airport, or should they be sent to a central gateway terminal for consolidation with other flights destined to some airport. National foreign companies and airlines typically use hubs like the hub and spoke of a wheel to gather freight foreign forwarding to destination airports. Contra rates and the fleet rates for a minimum com commitment of volume are not available to all destinations, particularly more remote destinations, volume discounts for unitized cargo movement or airline pallets are not available to all areas either. Indeed, some markets there is insufficient static traffic to even enable a spread in rates as in the above example. In this case, consolidation operations simply do not pay. Forwarders who are IATA agents still handle shipment to this place as commission agents of the airlines, not a direct air carrier. They function in the same way as travel agents and are paid commissions by the airlines to attract traffic and to reimburse the forwarder for her or his work in connection with the shipment. When a forwarder acts as consolidator of shipment as an indirect air carrier, the issues his own air will bill and assumes the risk of loss and damage. When he acts on a IATA agent, the airway bill is issued on behalf of the airline on the airline form. The airline assumes all the risk of transportation liability. As a forwarder, the company charges what it needs once. As an agent, it charges the airline's price for transportation. In some markets, air cargo rates charged by air carriers are controlled by the host government. The Japanese Civil Aeronautics Board for example, regulates airline rates. They do not regulate forward rates. Thus, generally speaking, the air freight forward industry is economically deregulated. The shipper and forwarder can negotiate whatever rates are mutually beneficial. The U.S. government has some control over maximum rates. A new item April 1993 said in part, 